goodwill for all beings. We want to look for happiness in a way that allows us to have goodwill for everyone, a happiness that doesn't take anything away from anyone else. Otherwise, our goodwill is hypocritical. This is something really special about the, the path that the Buddha taught. It's, he saw that we have the potentials within us to find a happiness inside that's better than anything that's available outside. He gave his life to trying to find this happiness, because at that point it wasn't a certain thing. It was just a possibility. But there was no confirmation. We're talking today about imagination. He was, he was able to imagine a deathless happiness that could be found within. The question simply was how to find it, what was the path? And it's good to have a sense of awe around his discovery, because it's bigger than anything you can imagine. But it starts with small steps, the path there. There's virtue in holding to the precepts. Concentration, getting the mind to be still, have it centered with a sense of well-being. And then discernment, being able to use that concentration to see what's going on in the mind, where you're causing yourself unnecessary suffering, what you're doing that's getting in the way of finding the happiness whose potential lies within. The Buddha wasn't operating from the position that we're all basically good or that we're all basically bad. As you notice, anybody would notice, looking in your mind, you have a mixture of both. So what he was relying on was not innate goodness, but our innate desire for, for well-being. This is what keeps us going. The biologists talk about the, the drive to survive. Well, what do we survive for, if not for happiness? You know, so many people feel that they can find no happiness at all in life. There's, they have no desire to survive. It's the happiness that we live for. So it's simply a matter of learning to take this drive for happiness and learning how to follow it wisely. The Buddha didn't say to be embarrassed of our desire for happiness. In fact, that's what he's assuming is underlying everybody's motion. Every motion we do, every act we do. He's simply saying, learn how to do it wisely. So this is why we're meditating here. It's part of the wisdom. As you said, it starts with the question, what when I do it will lead to long-term welfare and happiness. The wisdom there lies in seeing that it is your actions that are going to make the difference, and you want long-term, you don't want short-term. And then based on that principle is compassion. You realize that just as you want happiness, everybody else wants happiness. And if your happiness depends on their harm and suffering, it's not going to last. So you have to take their happiness into consideration as well. And there's the principle of purity, that your actions really do follow along with the principles of wisdom and compassion. Which the Buddha says, you have to examine your intentions every time you say something or do something or think something. What do you expect is going to come as a result? If you expect any harm, you don't do it. If 
you don't expect any harm, go ahead and do it. But while you're doing it, check to see what the actual results are. Because sometimes you can have good intentions, but they can be misinformed, they can be deluded. So you look for the immediate consequences. If they seem okay, you can continue. If not, you can stop. And then when the action is done, you look at the long-term consequences as well. And if you see that there wasn't any harm that was apparent right away, but there was long-term harm, then you resolve not to repeat that mistake. Go and talk it over with someone else who's on the path. Get, get some of their wisdom to apply to this. But if there was no harm, then you can take joy in the fact that your practice is developing. That attitude of joy is important. You want to be able to find a sense of well-being simply in the knowledge that you've done something skillful. Because that's going to be a lot of your energy on the path. The other part of the energy, of course, is getting the mind in concentration. I guess this enables you to see your actions a lot more clearly. And you're coming from a position of well-being so that you're not so 100% inclined to side with yourself all the time. You're in a better position to see when you actually do harm and don't do harm. So in this way, the pursuit of happiness actually develops qualities of wisdom, and compassion, and purity. These are the attributes that are credited to the Buddha himself. And as he said, he developed them not because he was a god or because he was someone special. He was special in the sense so that he took these potentials, which all of us have, and he developed them to see how far they could go. And he found that they could go very far. So we have him as an example. The true happiness can be found within. And it can be found in an honorable way. <clears throat> 